Hey, this is Thomas with Liberty Fox Defense, and today I'd like to show you my gunsmithing slash armor's toolkit and what I like about it. And uh, <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it. You can go to libertyfoxdefense.com and you'll find a recommended gear page, and I'll have links to all this stuff. So, first off, I wanted to show you where it resides normally is right here. Let me look at the display. Okay. And that way I can have easy access to it from my normal tool or shop. So just a workbench or two. Got another workbench over there. That's primarily where I have my leather working stuff or the holsters that I make. But um, having a, a vise in your shop that has the vice jaws like this one is invaluable. So you can see it has different for barrels and different angles or if you wanted you can just have the flat side uh, forward as well. And then they just uh, magnet on there and uh, I'd spend the extra money and get a craftsman can find them on sale for pretty reasonable. Anyway, so let's get this uh, toolbox over here so we can look at it. Sorry about all the motion. That should be good. Okay, let's start out with the box. I got this box at Home Depot for 40 bucks. And you may have noticed that when the lid is closed, you, the doors are locked. So in transport, you're good. Okay. So let's just take some measurements. It's about 20 and a quarter long, and it's about 9 inches deep, and about 12 inches tall. A uh, drawer inside. Looks to be about 7 and a third, 7 and a quarter by almost 18 inches. The top is a little, uh, has a little bit more space. It has eight and a quarter. Okay, so let's just kind of take it from the top. Cool. This is a lot of gunsmithing stuff I've collected over the years. So I just start pulling stuff out. So electrical tape, super handy. Some business cards, a little micro screwdriver. You know, you can it has lots of little bits, and this is a pretty good quality one. I've got a lesser quality one here, more for uh, computer electronics. A little pry bar, uh, plastic polymer pry bar, but these are little micro. Um, and I've twisted a bunch of those off. So this is a bubble level for mounting scopes. Uh, there's a lot of fancy stuff, but I'll get the gun level, then I'll get the scope level. Let me make sure the camera's still going. Can't. Okay, got some chamber flags. These are primarily, obviously, for rifle chamber flags. Uh, some writing utensils. Uh, I love these Milwaukee uh, permanent markers. They're actually far superior, in my opinion, to this plain Jane uh, Sharpies. 
the metallic Sharpie. This is a little bit of magic. Writing on metal, glass, uh, paint, whatever, and it, it stays pretty, pretty permanent. Looks like I got a couple Plan Bs here. Uh, and kind of a small, dedicated screwdriver, more of like a, a prying, or if you need to get deeper than with these, these things. Uh, this helps you inspect your barrel for corrosion or worn out rifling. Um, it gets the light directed in there, a little fiber optic thing. A pencil, mechanical pencil, critical. I'll make a little bit of mark on the, near the sights on a pistol before I adjust it. And then I can kind of judge, you know, like one pencil width is about two inches so yeah, uh, of adjustment. So anyway, mechanical pencil, super handy. Here's protection. Uh, dental tools. You guys have no idea how handy these are. <laughs> these are awesome. I just ask my dentist, like, hey, do you have any worn out tools? Uh, I need them in my, my uh, garage when I'm working on stuff and tinkering. So, a couple of those. And then this is an invaluable tool. It's a laser for sighting in. Uh, save a ton of money on ammo. It gets you on paper super quick. You know, you get about 20 yards away in your house and you, you get your optic or iron sights adjusted the best you can. This will fit 22 cal all the way up to 50 cal. So, those are super handy. And again, I'll have links to all this stuff on, on my website uh, to Amazon, primarily Amazon. There's a few things you have to get from Brownells. And I love Brownells. Uh, a friend of mine gave me these. These are, I've got two sets. Wheeler AR pivot pin, roll pin install. These will save you from launching those little pins halfway across the garage. Or worse, in, t in the field. I'll never find those pins. Then it'll be really expensive. And I don't use this a lot, but when I need it, I really need it. This goes into your AR-15 magwell. Um, and then into your vise. So it makes working on your gun super easy. Okay, don't have a camera guy. Got up a little early this morning. This is a, a laser sight-in tool for a 12 gauge. Got that for a tactical shotgun class. Got some extra batteries here. They're primarily for hearing protection. The hard brights that I recommend. Got like a kind of cleaning cloth and some band-aids. This isn't primarily a gun cleaning kit. Uh, a little container that has um, retain, detent retaining pins and air 15 springs and just miscellaneous stuff. If you're taking your gun apart. <clears throat> uh, these are my old Allen wrenches, metric and stand, American standard. I've got a nicer set. If I know I'm going to need them, I'll get my. Nicer set. <clears throat> this I just got at Home Depot the other day when I bought the uh, the toolbox, and it has all sorts of different bits. It's, it was on sale. And these Torx, I kind of go through those. But nice little case. I got a bunch of these zip ties. I hope. I will never, I'll watch the video and make links to all these. These are cool because you can use them and then reuse them. And then you can kind of daisy chain them together. Okay, headlamp. Gotta have a headlamp. Uh, these are my favorite, just one double A. 
and uh, they're super bright. And then you, you can uh, get different brightness settings. Okay, punches. You can't work on a very many guns without punches. And these are the stare punches. I would get kind of a field ready case that you roll up. This plastic one I've taped a couple of times. And uh, well, these these are about 50 bucks. Um, they're worth it. They're worth the extra money. Okay. Here's some more bits and kind of a bit holder. I finally broke down and purchased a roll pin punch set for driving in roll pins or driving out roll pins. They've got a little divot on there, gets right on there so it's not slipping off and scratching your gun. Now this is a punch from Brownells, it's the 1 16th inch and I've broken a pile of these stair punches but this you can buy multiple and then you just replace this uh, this pin here if you break it when you break it and then uh, got some uh, CLP and this is an old shaving brush and you put the CLP on here and it, you put that on your gun and you don't get too much or too little uh, lubricant mostly for AR-15s and things that lock like a lot of oil. This is a Otis cleaning kit. I got some extra things in here. Oh, it looks like I got another one of those. Different sizes, different brushes. It's on top because it's kind of fat. Okay, this is some cool stuff right here. This is a Wheeler gunsmithing driver. It's got the, the Glock front sight, if you want to remove your Glock front sight tool. Uh, it has specialty gunsmithing bits, and it comes with two, two drivers. Here's another small screwdriver, Phillips and flat. Uh, another dental tool, slightly different one. Um, here's another one of those AR-15 detent uh, installers that I showed you. Loctite blue, this is 242, and then this is just standard super glue Home Depot version. Uh, these are kind of cool. These are starter punches, so if you, you have a pin and they've got a little hole recess in there. You put the pin in there, and then you put that in there. Um, that's my miscellaneous stuff. Wooden dowels. <laughs> you would be surprised how much I use these to drive out stuck bullets in barrels. Primarily at cowboy action shoots, you know, that underloaded, underpowered, and there's not enough power to get the bullet to exit the barrel. And so uh, you get to use these to drive them out. So, stick those back in there. That's it for the top drawer. Uh, boar snakes. This is uh, my own little thing here. This is. Just an eyeglass container. There's some more uh, super glue. I've got some white lithium grease in this little syringe. Uh, it's almost a lifetime supply. And uh, you can put it exactly where you need it. Not too much, not too little. Got some extra screws. AR-15 um, bore cleaner. And some Allen wrenches and some more cleaning. Off. I'm going to get a towel, a couple towels to put over this. I don't think these will um, come out. I'm kind of tugging on them, some are loose. Um, as it jiggles in the truck, and I would 
be kind of out of place. Another war brush, um, Q-tips and patches, different size calibers. Uh, here's a, another brush, some grease, tape measure. Pretty handy for checking your targets or measuring. You should be surprised how some medical uh, flyers, more or less. I don't know. Gloves, and if you slip and touch yourself, so these help you grip uh, a little tighter. Got a micrometer in here. And of course, I open it. Okay, here's a Vietnam era cleaning kit for uh, Air 15 M16. These are tough. These are, are good for driving out st stuck things. <laughs> oh, these gloves I got from Costco. They come in a big pack at Costco. They're the Wells Lamont. I use them for mechanicing. These are brand new. I haven't used them much, but they they don't you don't sweat in them. They grip good. They protect your hands. They protect your hands from a lot of grease. Uh, more cleaning patches. <coughs> this is awesome. This is for mounting your scope. It's a little torque wrench. You can set it to the exact torque you want, and then it's got the different drivers plus the other bits. And it comes in a nice case, so awesome sauce. This is a uh, trigger pull gauge. I'll tell you how uh, exactly how many pounds and ounces your trigger is. Well, this is a monstrosity. This is just spare springs and AR-15 parts and backup, backup, backup uh, kit. That's mostly to help people. Uh, Gorilla duct tape. I like this one inch. You can also use it as a pounding block. You know, you put your your gun or slide or something on here, and you're you're pounding out a pin with a punch. And this space in the middle is a place for your pin to go. So. Ah, where to start? You got some uh, some green. Love that stuff. A lot of the Famous gunsmiths love simple green. It doesn't really hurt your your skin and your hands if you're doing a lot. WD-40. <laughs> I use this stuff like crazy, mostly on handguns and AR-15s. You're you're lubricating as you're cleaning instead of using harsh chemicals to to clean your gun and then using other other products to neutralize those harsh uh, chemicals. WD-40 is going to do most of what you need. And then if you miss cleaning up the harsh chemicals, uh, the WD-40 is not going to hurt your, your gun. Okay, uh, I got uh, what I call vice grips. These are kind of needle nose vice grips. You need to really get onto something. My favorite gunsmithing hammer I got uh, copper on one side and kind of a plastic nylon on the other. It's not too big. It's not too small. Um, this I've <laughs> I've shown tons of people this hammer and they all love it. Um, put your phone number on it with your metallic sharpie. Should be rocking. Uh, I got a small pry bar. Uh, a screwdriver. Let's see, um, a reticle leveler, this is pretty awesome, it's got a, a little leveler in there and you stick it on your gun and you get your gun level and then your optic level and you can use these lines to look at the crosshairs, uh, smaller lines on the back. A friend of mine showed those to me about a decade ago and I have really you know, pliers. 
two crescent wrenches. Sometimes you need to hold and wrench. Some small channel locks. I guess uh, it'd be okay to have some bigger ones. Uh, this is my favorite AR-15 uh, Castle Nut wrench. I've owned several of different versions. This is the Rock River one on, on uh, Brown Owls. They're about nine bucks. And I they're really hard to break. They're all contiguous piece of metal. They've got three points of contact. A lot of them have one point of contact and it's a it's a punch or a pin and those always break. That's gonna be how I know that. Inside here I've got a universal sight adjustment tool. It came with every possible jig and shim. Uh, and it's, it's awesome. You can put this in your vise at, at home or in the field. You can wrestle with it on the, on the table or have a friend help you. This is some Air 15 front sight tools. I got this red so I can wear it around my neck and not lose it. Uh, this goes with the laser foresighting thing. A couple little shims. Now, I know what you're thinking, a magnetic uh, tool bin. <laughs> but they're not that expensive. And as you're taking parts off, you can put them in the order you took them off and that you won't lose track of them. They'll be right there where you need them. Uh, if they get bumped, you're not losing all your bits and pieces. So, that's that. So, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have suggestions for other tools, I've got a huge wish list. But you can't carry everything into the field. But this is a good start. You can uh, have it in your shop and have access to it. And then when you go to the range, you can grab one item and be pretty confident that you have everything you need to uh, resolve your, your gun or tweak it or improve it or sight adjustments, etc. So again, libertyfoxdefense.com, look for recommended gear and there will be links to all this stuff. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.